Welcome to the Church Live Word. Our mission is to make disciples through the Word so that they live well their lives, obeying and teaching the will of God, that is, Jesus. Second of Thessalonians, two, on and on. We're going to read together. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to Him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seemed to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, but that they will not come unless the rebellion comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object or worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And you know what is restraining him now, so that he may be revealed in his time? For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, only he no restraints, it will do so until he is out of the way, and then the lawless one will be revealed. The Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is by the, the lawless one, is the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders, and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false, in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we ought always to give thanks God for you, brothers beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. To this he called you through our gospel, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers, stand firm and hold to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by our spoken word or by our letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself our, and God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope to grace, comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word, we pray, so that God will be, give us power in our spirit to receive, that the spirit will be received and the light will be received by us, that our eyes could be opened that everything that is false will be taken away, that our ears would really listen the word of God, and we start to live the eternal life. We start to and walk our real path. So let's, for our spirit, Father, we give you thank you, thanks for your word. Your word is truth to be gathered in your name. We want everything that comes from you. Celestial Father, please give us grace and have mercy, help us, save us, open our spiritual eyes, open our spiritual ears, take away every veil that stops your, the glory that comes in our life. I claim you give me wisdom, the knowledge, the knowledge of the, the Word, power of the Word, that I don't owe or straight left or right, that I just I am revealed from your Spirit and from your Son, Jesus Christ, taking all the truth, glorifying your word, praying all of your glory over us. Right, we ask you in the name of Jesus, Amen. You can sit down. The first Sunday of the month, we celebrate the Supper, because that's the law of God, remembering work of Jesus, and we teach one aspect that is mental, that aspect is uh, guided by the seminar of the will of God. We are advancing, we are in the chapter 11, 12 of this seminar that talks about the seduction spirits that are, what are they? We have to learn here in the first of Thessalonians, Paul is making like a warning to the church, and that warning is against deceitfulness, against you letting yourself be deceived. And he's telling the church that the coming of God is truth, is truth, is real, but it's not going to happen until the apostasy happens. What is apostasy? And he starts to describe what that is. Apostasy is when this saint place 
church, the temple of when in the church there is starts to manifest the son of the sin, placing himself as, a, as if he were God, taking the place of God. When the church stops giving to Jesus the first place, when just substitutes the words of Jesus by the words of the man and of the knowledge of man, of the man, in that moment, church starts to become in the moment of apostasy. I, we, I don't know if we are in the last times, but once evident signal, please read Matthew 24 and 25, one evident sign of this, of how close is the coming of God, apostasy of the church. When you go to a church that says that is Christian, and you start, start to listen to some other word that is not the word of Jesus, another message that is not the gospel of salvation, in that moment, apostasy has come. When a church, you give preeminence and not to God or to money and not to God, in that moment, apostasy has come. I feel it. He, turn on the radio stations, Christian radio stations or channels and television, I see these churches and I see it there that they are not preaching the gospel. Maybe I'm totally deceived, but I, I think that the message is not the gospel of salvation. So I tremble. So what is going on with the church? A church is in the apostasy because the most important thing is not God. In the churches, not in the world. In the world, of course, it's not God. In the world, the world is what is important. But here we're talking about the church. That's the signal that is evident that the Lord is coming. Maybe it's not the church. Okay, let us let us stop looking at the sin of the other. Maybe you here that are here in our church. What is really occupying the first place in your word? And in the Le, what is really occupying this uh, first place in your life? In verse 4 it says, Who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object or, of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Okay, so you have to know this. You are part of the temple of God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And what is occupying the first place in your life? Well, I don't know. What is preeminent for you? Yes, God, sure. Yes, you said, yes, God, God. But here you don't say that. Talking about here, yes, God, God, in your heart. This talks about circumcised, the heart is that, that we, a heart is really in some other thing. On Facebook, somebody, a teacher said in a, sta in a state, nobody's going to take out time, but only for that they have put their hearts on. Anything that has stolen your heart, I'm that. So the young people that are in love, they, it doesn't matter if they're studying in the university or working, if it's 10 o'clock at night, they go and visit the girlfriend. Or I don't have time for a trans transportation. I don't care. I go walking just because we have to be together. If it is raining or whatever, it doesn't matter. And even if it's very hard, it will be very romantic. And hopefully, maybe they could do the Titanic scene and everything. Because they have, they know where they have their hearts on. Where your heart is, your treasure is also. So are you in apostasy? You have to ask yourself, you're an apostate of the faith. Have you given your heart to something? And you have let that something occupy the place of God, replacing God. That is the reason of your existence, the meaning of your existence. It could be. Maybe work, your son, your daughter, your wife, husband, money, anything. Anything really keep putting away God. So you're starting to be to, to be in apostasy. That's Matthew 24. Matthew 24. So multiplying evil what? The love of many will be cold. When the Son of Man will come again, would he find faith on earth? Maybe. You start to look and never you find it. No, what happened? No, I don't know. The church, I don't know. The weather, you don't know. Is that, you know, I realized. You start to lower your faith, but it's, it's not because of the people, it's because your heart, because your heart is not 
a heart that, of faith because you're an arrogant before God because you, you're thinking that you can live without God. That's why God says the psalm that we read to those that are arrogant, take a look, look, look from far away while the humble receive him, receive them. What, what kind of humble people he's talking about? Do you know these lazy people? They say, oh, glory to God. Hallelujah, yes. These people that are hypocrites. We're going to steal oh, for the glory and honor of God, but we're going to steal. What are they? Hypocrites. The spiritual hypocrites. It's better that they are really evil. Like, God, you know what? I don't want anything with you. But no, they say, glory, glory, hallelujah to God. In his back, you understand, God, that I give my first place to, well, to something. Huh? You know how they act? These are people that fool everyone. They, they, it's like these people that are experts and fool you. They, they, they look at your heart. The scammers, and they get inside of your heart. For example, to, spacers, to be scammed, you have to have a desire that is really evil. This person comes to and look, I have some business for you. No, I have some friends. No, they're not very good, but well, it doesn't matter, you know. The thing is that if you have 100,000 pesos, me and, and one week I will give you 500,000. Is that my friends make some business that, well, it's very fast, it has nothing to do with you. You, you just give me the 100,000 pesos, pesos and, I, and in a week I will give you 500,000. Oh, what a blessing. Glory God, glory to God. And then, well, I'm going to take a risk. I take out the 100,000, please God, save my money. And you give the scammer this money. And this person, one week ago, Give you, gives you back the 500,000 or gives you the 500,000. Don't you worry, that's already planned. So here, have the 100,000 and the 500,000 too. And everybody's very happy. And you're, wow, without doing anything, that's, my friends really make a very good big business. And they're going to pay five or ten times what I invest. So if you want to, if you... Get 10 millions? Maybe I can give you 100 millions. One, 100 millions. What a blessing. So they go to family, you know, we have to, you know, sell the house and the car and sell jewelry, everything. In one month, we will back the money. And my friends, I don't know what they do, these friends of mine, but my friends, they, they you know, make the money. And you take the money and give them. And, oh, God bless you. Oh, what a blessing. In one week. Oh, sure. Oh, in three days. Well, but what happens? Oh, they are not coming. Oh, my God, the money. Oh, God, please. Why do you do this to me, God? You understand the evil of man that he, he doesn't even, he doesn't even, is able to acknowledge his evil. This is what he deserves. So this is the way Satan is. He doesn't scan or anything. He just comes and you know, gives you that and he starts to really deceive you. He beat you and then you wouldn't go back to church and he, you are then tied up by Satan. You're tempted. It's not by the side of but your concupiscence. You're seduced and attracted. And then this concupiscence go to the sin. And sin then, we are so evil that we, you know, blame God. But look, God is placing, anyway, before us, life and death. This part is talking about, we like this last part of Thessalonians, we could say, but we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers beloved by the Lord, because God shows you the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth, to this call you through our gospel so that you may obtain the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But before, he says, the coming of the lawless is one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders, and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing, because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false 
in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in righteousness. What we're going to be learning about God is that God gives you, He places blessing on the curse and before us. Oh no, this is not from God. No, everything's from God, don't worry. They are giving signs and wonderful things. Sure, that's from God, but what for what? What is the reason? So that they can deceive, so that they, they can take what they had in their hearts because they didn't want the truth. That is what is called the seduction, the spirit of seduction, to be deceived. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 30. This is from God. This man, oh, God brought, brought this man to me. No, you yourself looked for that problem. That you made it up. You really looked. God, Lord, if it is from you, if it is not from you, take away this woman from me. Oh, you are the one who placed yourself in the, in, the, in the place of that woman, so understand it. Understand how the spiritual word and the faith works and the will that God gave us. Deuteronomy says, and when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse which you have set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God has driven you, and return to the Lord your God, you and your children, and obey His voice in all that I command you today, with all your heart and with all your soul, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have mercy on you, and He will gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. He has placed before man curse and the blessing. Puts it, God. But God, why do you do this? Just leave us the blessing. Don't put the curse, God. No, you have to understand how this, how love works. Love is a decision. No, it's not a decision like, oh, I'm going to decide to love you. No, you don't decide that. Love is you say, oh, I'm going to give you your, my heart. Yes, I am going to give myself. I'm going to compromise myself. I'm going to make His will. I'm going to go live His paths. I love you, love you, but I do whatever I want. And then I get a pose from you and I attack you. No, you love here and you love here, but you don't love here in the heart. Don't fool yourself. To love Him is that God is placing before us what? The blessing and the curse. It's like, like the young guys are presenting today the exam, we have prayed, but they have to study. Otherwise, they're not going to make it well. If they don't study, how can they do it? God, well, He puts a, a, like a, you know, a test, like a multiple selection, A, B, C, D, or E. Well, here God is just placing two options, A or B. A, blessing, curse. A, life, B, death. A, light, B, shadows. A, salvation, perdition, or your soul lost, or lose your soul. So mark A or B. And But God tells you the answer is A. Before you mark, God tells you the answer is A. But you mark. It was your decision. Don't blame God for that. Can you imagine? Puts the blessing on the Lord's life and death before you. Light and shadows, salvation, and to get lost. You choose life so that you can live. You can see now uh, how evil we are. And then we blame God about it. Oh God, why God is so bad? Why He gave us two options? Come on. I, you, he told you, you know what? You know what A is? I'm going to send my son. He's going to bleed for you. He's going to live again. He's going to bring the Holy Spirit. Now you know what A means? Or what it is? Oh, so difficult. So difficult.
I love you, I love you, love you. B, you mark B. No, no, that's not possible. It was, it was A. And to the children. You have to mark A. And what did you mark, Daddy? So you want your sons to mark A? How can you think of that? It is very arrogant. You are very arrogant before God. I want to call you fool, but this is more than fool. Because fool, you know, God God helps the fool. Even if they if he's clumsy, he's not going to let him go all the way. But the arrogant, the arrogant has no place before God. But if you and come back again, God, God will give you an eraser for this test. Mark B. Okay, no, sorry. You can erase and mark. You erase and you mark B again. No, that's not possible. Come on. Don't blame God. Blessing for generations. He wants his gener if your generations, your generations to be blessed. Mark A. You you want to have a good life. Mark A. You want to have the existence in a right, wonderful way? Just mark A. Oh, I'm very bad. Where is God? What did you mark? I mark B, but I don't know. Okay, erase and mark A. No, no, I already marked B. Okay, no, no, it's your option. I'm not going to, you know, push you to do it. But at least be fair. So don't blame God. If your outcasts are in the uttermost parts of heaven, I'm reading uh, verse 4, from there the Lord your God will gather you, and from there he will take you, and the Lord your God will bring you into the land that your fathers possessed, that you may possess it, and he will make you more prosperous and numerous than your fathers, and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring, so that you will love the Lord of your God with all your heart and with all your soul, that you may live. Uh, the problem is heart, because where our treasure is, is our heart. When the Bible talks about when they thicken their hearts, because they, they, it means that they, they start to love some idols, and they place some other things instead of God in their hearts. And, and that you can see that because you started to stray away from God. You lost your first love. What does, what does God tell you? Come, not even circumcise your heart. Come that I will circumcise your heart, says good. He will cleanse us. John chapter 15, so that we will have more fruits. It's going to work in our hearts. And the Lord your God will put all these curses on your foes and enemies who, per who persecuted you. And you shall again obey the voice of the Lord and keep all these commandments that I command you today. The Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of your cattle, and in the fruit of your ground. For the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, as he took delight in your fathers. Lord, I want to please you. A. It's very simple. I want to make your will, God. What do you want from me? Mark. Lord, I want, I want the blessing of my generations. What do I have to do? A. And you mark B. So what are we playing here? And give you the option. Don't go wrong, he always gives you the option. How many A's are there? Just one. So he's talking verse 11. When you obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes, statutes that are written in the book of the law, when you turn the 
to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. For this commandment that I command you today is not too hard for you, neither, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will ascend to heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it? Do it. Neither is beyond the sea that you should say, Who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you can do it. Put before you, I have set forth before you life and death, death and evil. Who has done it? God has placed it before us. I think this is from God. Yes, of course it's from God. But is it will? Because His will is that you don't stray away, that you don't get lost. But if you choose to get lost, that I command you today by the loving the Lord your God by walking in His ways and by keeping His commandments and His statutes and His rules then you shall live and multiply and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it but if your heart turns away and you will not hear but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them I declare to you today that you shall sure you shall surely perish you shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I can call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying His voice and holding fast to Him. Mark A. He's telling you what to do very easily. And He's telling you, if you mark B, you will perish. It is not so difficult. Loving the Lord your God, obeying His voice and holding fast to Him, for He is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land that you, the Lord, swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Look, Psalm 40 with me. We're talking about uh, Psalm 138. That God to thee proud he looks away but the humble he really receives he gets closer to the humble Psalm 40 the emphasis in the verse 4 but look from the beginning I waited patiently for the Lord he inclined to me and heard my cry he drew me up from the pit of destruction out of my mirror bog and set my feet upon a rock making myself secure he put a new song in my mouth a song of praise to our God many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord blessed is the man who makes the Lord his who makes the Lord his trust who does not turn that to the proud to those who go straight after a lie that word arrogant it's naughty. It is naughty. It's vain. Fool. Yes, no, no. We cannot, you know, go before God like uh, as if we were very arrogant. We have to kneel. And who are we going to? You are right. Only you have words of eternal life. You have multiplied, O oh Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. I will proclaim and tell of them. Yes, they are more than can be told. In sacrifice and offering you have not delighted, but you have given me an open ear. But offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I'd like to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is written within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, Lord. Oh, Jehovah, I know. In the congregation is where we, we formalize our faith, our life of faith. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. Going to Second of Thessalonians, the second part that is uh, what I like. But let's look at the second, because it's, it's talking about two kinds of people, people that who let themselves be seduced and deceived, and those who let themselves be guided by the truth. 
Verse 13, but we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers beloved by the Lord, because God shows you as the fruit fruits, first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and believe in the truth. Here, of the doctrine of the predestination are wrong. Look, oh, God already chose us for salvation, yes, but how? Here he clarifies immediately through the sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. Of course, yes, God from the beginning determined salvation of man. God wants man to be saved. God wants man to have life that has light. He wants to bless man. But he also gave man the will and the option of choosing his path or not. The sun has to shine. It is not that he has to choose. That's what to do. The sun is not going to, you know, wake up one day and I'm not going to shine today. No, somebody else should shine. No. So the fish, they say multiply. And the fish, what they do, they multiply. You will never say one fish, male and female, and say, oh, no, I'm, I, today, no, I don't want to have a headache today. No, never. They multiply. Or a pair of rabbits. You know, and it, it happens the same. They multiply. The animals like the rabbits because God ordered them to do that, to multiply. What do they do? They do obey, they multiply. But to man, gave man the will. So the man can say to God, you know what, I'm going to mark B. And God says, perfect. You don't want to love me? You're not going to be with me. Oh, logic, come on. God, I'm not going to love you, but, but you are, you, you have to be with me. But what is the pact? No, the pact is done, is based in love, on love. The first and second pact are based on love. If you obey, I will bless you. If you accept my grace, then you are my son. If you don't want, then if you don't want, then you're not. But you promised, yes, I promise. But if you love me, I will be with you. God is not a fool. Saying to Thessalonians, we ought to always give thanks to you, to God for you, brothers beloved by the Lord, because God shows you as a first fruits to be saved. God wants man to be saved. We saw it in John chapter 6. That's the will of God, that, that any, anyone that saw sees the Son of God will not get lost. That's why He's patient. He gives us the mer His mercy. He's patient with everyone, not wanting that anybody get, gets lost, but that everybody would come to repentance. But how can you make that salvation? Through what? The, through sanctification by the Spirit. In other words, the work that He does through the Spirit. What is the work of the Spirit? What is the work of the Spirit? How is it that the Spirit gives us our sanctification? How does the Spirit make us sanctification? We're walking on the street and then, oh, the Spirit gave me sanctification. Glory to God. No, that's not the way it is. That's mysticism, not to be spiritual. No, to be spiritual is through the Word. How is it that the work, the Spirit works for sanctification? What what is does it mean to to be this sanctification? To be set apart. How does the Spirit set us apart? Are you a saint? Yes, yes, I am. Because I love God. I love Him. I love Him. But you mark B then you don't love him, really. For the honor of God, we're going to steal. No, you don't love him. For the glory and honor of God, we're going to kill. No, you don't love him. 
Don't fool yourself. John chapter 14, verses 15. If you love me, what? You mark A. If you love me, you mark A. You will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Please, don't ask the world if you should mark A or B. What is the world going to tell you? B, because they don't know God. Ask the Spirit. Ask God. Ask through the Word of God. Lord, what should I mark? And He will tell you with... He's going to tell you, without any doubt, mark A, mark A, so that you can live. No, but you, don't you see that this person that is so important, intelligent, says B, so God, what does he tell you? What does God tell you? Mark B, mark B. You want to mark B? Do, okay, go ahead, mark B. That's the hard part. That is what means that to be, I mean, the, the seduction spirit, the deceitfulness spirit, the mistake spirit. When you, because of your own concupiscence, I know that it's A, but I want to mark B. So God says, okay, ready. So I let you go and tell him what she should he or she mark. And the world says, mark B, but the Bible says A. Okay, this is from the Lord. Of course, it's from the Lord. Operates with the blessing and with the curse. Don't you see that? That's the difficult part. If you don't want to listen to the truth of this, this truth spirit, you're going to listen to the mistake spirit. Verses 26. From the 25, these things I have spoken to you. Okay, 24. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I'm still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. The Holy Spirit will show us that Jesus Jesus said, Mark A. No, oh yes, I, I love God, I studied, yes, I, I made a doctor, I studied for to be a doctor on the master's degree, but I think that the, the Bible doesn't say that, uh, it's just an interpretation, and the Bible should say that I really should Mark B. Okay, go ahead, Mark B. But understand that you're doing, you're being an arrogant before God. John, John 15, 25. Okay, 24. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen and hated both me and my father. But the word that is written in their law must be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause. But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. That is why it is called the Spirit of Truth, because he's showing who? Jesus. Believe in Jesus. There is forgiveness of sins, life, eternal life. That's what we're going to celebrate today. Come near Jesus. He has promised that even if you're clumsy, he, you're not going to... I mean, He's going to cleanse you. If you stay in Him, He's going to transform you. Come to Him. No, I better Mark B. Okay, perfect. Mark B, no problem. What are you really losing here? The love of truth. And you'll give chapter 16, verse... Seven. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It, it is your advantage that I go away, for I, if I don't, do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but what? You cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you to into the, all the truth, for he will not speak 
on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, and for he will take what is mine and declare to you. This is the way the way this Holy Spirit sanctifies. If you want to be a saint, listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to what he is speaking. What is he talking about? He's talking about Jesus, about how to believe in Jesus, how to kneel before him. We are in Second of Thessalonians, but I told you, but for what? Why do you want to be sanctified by the Holy Spirit? Let's see Thessalonians. It says, but for what? Why do you want to be sanctified by the Holy Spirit? It says, faith through sanctification and the faith in the truth, the belief in the truth. Walk with the truth. Faith is not something here on the head. What is the faith here in the heart? So you have to, you, you start to live for that, for the truth. But the verses 9 before, the coming of the lawless, the other versions lawless, how do they say it? In the verses 9, it says the evil one. I, I love that word. Uh, only the man, that man is the work of Satan. Yeah, that is the man really give you the gospel. He's going to make you get lost from the gospel. It's a little child, it's a perfect to, yes, a person take you to the, you know, to the feet of Christ. That same person will really can get you lost too. That lawless is the work of whom? Of Satan. Of course, there are two spirits. The Holy Spirit or the spirit of evil. Choose A. Choose A. Don't get lost. What does Satan want? Steal, kill, and destroy. What does the Lord want? Give you life, an abundant life. Choose it. It is not so difficult. It says, the coming of lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all what power and false signs and wonders. Oh, but they're making miracles. Didn't you see all the miracles? Of course I did. Oh, I think that is from God. Of course it is from God. But for what? So that you get lost. Look, Isaiah. Three. El curso de tus caminos. Mire conmigo For what? So that they get lost. Allá adelante Isaías, después de Jeremías. Ezequiel capítulo Verse 11. Woe to the wicked. It shall be ill with him for what his hands have dealt out shall be done to him. My people, infants are their oppressors and women rule over them. All my people, your guides mislead you and they have swallowed up the course of your paths. Now, let's see Ezekiel 14. Ezekiel 14. Really, it's four. Therefore, speak to them and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Any one of the house of Israel who takes his idols into his heart and says the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and yet comes to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him as he comes with the multitude of his idols, that I may lay hold of the hearts of the house of Israel, who are all strangled from me through their idols. God is going to answer according to the idols of your heart. Come, come, this is about business of money. Come here, let's make a pact. Uh, why don't you give me a seed? Oh, Lord, yes, this is what I want. Oh, there's your money. Why were they looking for the truth? No. And who answers according to the idols of your heart? God. God will send you a power that is deceit. Let's go back to Thessalonians. Oh, this is terrific. But I saw the miracles, yes, of course. Read Matthew 24. And false, uh, faked anointed will 
come up and they will make deceitful fool. That is apostasy of the church. Oh, but I didn't realize it. But, but God, do you do mark A? Yes, but I wanted to mark B. Okay. It says in the verses 10. And with all wicked exception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so to be saved. If you don't want to receive the love of truth, saved, what does God do? 11. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false. Who sends it? God. Because you didn't want to love God. So God let you perish. Blame him. Blame your wicked heart. At least you have to be brave in that and acknowledge that if I got lost, it was because of me. Because I didn't want to listen to your truth. And I rejected your love. I rejected your pact. I rejected to love you. And he sends a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false, in order that all may condemn who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Do you understand what are these seduction spirits? Those powers that God sent so that they be deceived, those that didn't want to believe, because He sent us His Son and we didn't believe Him. So God gave us. In Romans 1, remember that. He didn't take God, so God gave us a very not clear mind. Ephraim is given to the idols. Let him. Matthew chapter 13, let's finish. Then the disciples came and said to him, verse 10, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to the one who has, more will be given, and he will have an abundance, but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to you them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that days. You will indeed hear, but never understand, and you will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dual, and with their hard ears they can barely hear, and their eyes have, they have closed. Least they, have sh uh, they should see with their eyes, and hear with their eyes, and understand with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears for they hear. For truly I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. And you, blessed, you are blessed, you listened. Yes, I, with all our, our evil, with, with our, our laziness, with our, our wicked heart, but you know what? The only thing that we have that we listened to his voice and we believed him. We were the most of the fool, but we believe in him. What does he have for us? Salvation and eternal life. And we all today celebrate that fact. It was in his blood. Yes, look, I will forgive you your sins. Even if you're very clumsy, I'm not going to let you go away from my path. And I will give you manna, the bread of heaven so that you walk on my path so that you live with my will i will give you my spirit that he will guide you to the blessing land that's the new pact that is what we're celebrating today we're going to celebrate supper and when you celebrate supper we're going to pray thanking God so that we're going to pray now. And Father, we thank you for your words. That is the truth. Your word is the Jesus, help us to see. Help us to understand. You told us that we should mark A, Lord. Help us choose blessing and life and light. Use us to help to choose salvation. You don't want anybody from us to perish. Please help us do your will, Father. Circumcise this wicked heart. Help us like the beast. Because feed. And please work this wonderful miracle of salvation. 
Thank you for your beautiful, precious blood that forgave our sins. Your words, that is the bread of heaven that you have given us. In the name of Jesus, Amen.